This video is sponsored by Parade. Oh man, I just knocked it on my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi my lovelies. You guys have been asking for it and I'm finally delivering. Today we're gonna talk about squinkies. Something that was a big trend in the 2000s and probably before that was the concept of vending machine toys. You could find these machines typically in arcades of course, but also sometimes grocery stores. Specifically the ones that come to mind for me when bringing this up are Squishland, Bok Choy Boys, or figurines of the character Domo. This very concept though is what helped shape the toy line we now know as Squinkies. Besides Squinkies' colorful cute designs, delectable texture when chewed on, or the eventual use of licensed characters, the other thing they are remembered by is the clear plastic balls they came enclosed in. We recognize the trend of gumball machine capsule collectible toys, but there wasn't a mass market solution, so we decided to make a mass market toy that people immediately knew what it was. The rest is history. Now previously I've talked about other toy lines with a lack of online documentation, from the fidget friends to the singamajigs, but shockingly there isn't at least one poorly put together wiki of any sort for squinkies. This meant when it came to release dates for certain characters or playsets or lines, I had absolutely no timeline to go off of. And it got so challenging that I even attempted to reach out to Blip for more information because this has been so highly requested and I love squinkies so I really wanted to do this video no matter what. So I apologize in advance if the format of this video is less timeline based. I mentioned dates and years whenever I could because I find it gives a better understanding and truly takes you back of like, okay, this is when I was this age and I remember this specific line coming out and being excited for it. Luckily in the end, I was able to figure it out without like getting any information from the company. And it was mostly thanks to the Squinkies Facebook page actually that I was even able to piece this together at all. Anyway, before we continue, let's have a word from today's sponsor. Sponsor. Comfort is something that has always been a top priority for me, considering it took me years to actually start expressing myself through my clothing because of my sensory issues as an autistic person. That's why I'm such a big fan of Parade, because not only are their products comfortable, but also amazing quality. I'm currently wearing Parade's Sheer Radiance Corset, and I am obsessed. I love the look of corsets because they make such a fun layering piece but obviously they can be tight and constraining. I mean, that's kind of the point. However, I wore this top as I sat at my desk for several hours. I'm currently on a time crunch trying to get all my content done. So that way when I'm at VidCon and I don't have my computer, I don't have to be working and stressed. But throughout the hours I was working on this video, this top not only was comfortable, but it gave me the support I needed without having to wear a potentially uncomfortable bra. Like, let's be real, sometimes we just don't wanna wear a bra. I'm kind of like in a position where I don't have the option to really do that as much as I want, especially if I'm like sitting and like working because I will get like the most intense back pain. Also living in California, we're just starting to get like a taste of the summer heat we'll be suffering through until August or September. And my room for some reason gets so stuffy and hot, like even with the ceiling fan running. So I 10 out of 10 would recommend to avoid not overheating during these hot summer days. Speaking of summer, parade Parade's summer sale is currently going on right now. If you'd like to try Parade for yourself today, it's their biggest sale of the year, so there's no better time than now. The link will be in my description. What I love too is they have such a wide variety of cool patterns as well as sizes because everyone deserves to be comfortable. And with my code LULA50, you can get up to 50% off on nearly everything, excluding the 80% off sale. Thank you so much again to Parade for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to Squeeze. Squinkies. Now, Squinkies have a pretty unique beginning because they weren't a product of your typical big name toy company, but they were created by a smaller independent company called Blip Toys. Whoa. <laughs> I want to apologize in advance for accidentally saying Blip several times in this video. The correct name of the company is Blip Toys. They're just very similar words. That's all there is to it. I think we know at this point, um, I have a bit of dyslexia when reading my scripts and I never realize it until after the fact that I'm saying anything wrong. And then I'm like, why, why did I say that? 
Blip Toys was a company started by Bill Nicholas and Peter Camille in the early 2000s. While Bill had extensive experience in toy marketing and or sales, Peter was an established inventor. So they decided to come together and create this company and kind of use each other's strengths to their advantage. And soon enough, using Bill's connections and Peter's track record, the pair started out by developing unique IP concepts for a variety of toy companies and retailers. The company did this for the first eight years before making the decision to venture into making a product of their own. This transition went smoother than you'd expect because although Blimp is a smaller independent toy company, it was really thanks to those years spent developing those IP concepts that helped them get Squinkies out there. In an interview with New York Times, Bill talks about how his company was just a 16 person ran operation in Minnesota. So for reference, that's just a few less employees than they have at second try. This is notable because due to Blimp being on such a smaller scale than these bigger multi-million dollar budget companies like Mattel or Hasbro, retailers are less likely to take a chance on them. So the eight years of Blimp Toys having success in developing IP concepts were crucial and ended up helping them get these kinds of meetings. Big retailers like Toys R Us, Target, and Walmart all want exclusive toys to offer. Independent retailers who might take a chance on smaller manufacturers have all but disappeared. Mr. Nicholas began by walking through stores, finding an opening in what's known as the small doll aisle, where My Little Pony and Littlest Pet Shop have reigned for years. All those brands have been there for a long time, and there's not a lot of innovation, he said. In the eight years since he founded Blip Toys, Mr. Nicholas had enough success with novelty items that he can get meetings with Target, Toys R Us, and Walmart. In the same article, it's also stated that the inspiration for Squinkies came from Walmart telling him that the vending machine concepts were popular in its Japanese division. So Bill researched this industry and it led him to the idea for the toys. Squishy rubber characters about the size of a knuckle that come in plastic bubbles. The other inspiration or goal he had with the toy was the collectible aspect, with Zuzu Pets, the toy fad of 2009, being mentioned as an example and or inspiration. And honestly, I could not think of a better example considering exactly the risk with launching a toy like Squinkies. It is also a dicey time for simple toys, often overshadowed during the holidays by games and gadgets featuring the latest technology. If you know anything about Zuzu Pets or you've watched my video exploring the Zooniverse, they are robotic hamsters, but also characters with names and personalities that got kids attached, which made them very collectible. So Blip Toys did exactly that when launching Squinkies. Blip created hundreds of characters and each package of Squinkies includes at least four characters. With one purchase, the child will become an instant collector, he said. Mr. Johnson, the toy analyst, said that was smart. You're creating a reason for kids to go out and buy more. In December of 2009, I assume, Bill presented his ideas to three major toy retailers. To prove that Squinkies could be very profitable at a low price, he got the figures produced at a factory in China, with the details being spray painted on. When asked if Walmart executives thought it could be done well at the small scale, we didn't, said Miss Phillips, the Walmart executive in charge of toys, but he really worked hard on the execution. Something really interesting about toys in the early 2010s is the way the internet was able to create trends, although way too common in 2024. In the 2010s, it was the first time people in the toy market realized the impact of the internet in a way. I bring this up because this is where I think Bill made his smartest decision yet. Since he knew that Squinkies would be tested by retailers in August to pique people's interest before they were officially released in stores, he reached out to over 300 bloggers, online bloggers, sending them squinkies to review or for giveaways. Blogs were all the rage before YouTube took off and other modern day social medias. It's how people would connect online and it's how Bill knew that he could get audiences excited about this toy. Anne, who runs the blog dealwithwisemommy.net, said her son and nieces understood what the toys were right away from playing with the vending machines in restaurants. She was relieved at the low price. That's one of the best things about the toy. They're not very expensive. In Waterloo, Ontario, Erica, who runs BassGiraffe.com, said the collectible angle pulled
pulled in her four-year-old daughter. She's like, now we have to get this, and this, and that. That's why we have so many, she said. So when August finally rolled around and Squinkies started hitting shelves, saying they were a success is an understatement. Sales were incredibly above everyone's expectations. And as Black Friday approached, Squinkies not only reached Toys R Us's hot toy list, but also got nominated for a Toy of the Year award, specifically for their Squinkies Cupcake Surprise Bake Shop playset, which they announced on their Facebook page on December 10th of 2010. Growing up, this was actually the only Squinkies playset I ever had. I mostly got the packs of like characters because they were really affordable and obviously a playset is gonna be more. But point is, the sales were so unexpected. In fact, they had to rush to get more Squinkies back in stock in time for Black Friday and most likely anticipating, you know, the holiday season in general. I say that because in an article by 19 News published after Black Friday, it stated, the demand has been so high, the company is expanding to keep up. Another thing that's mentioned in this same article is by next spring, Squinkies would be available in 52 countries. With the unexpected success, Blip knew they had a hit on their hands and they had to move quickly. And sure enough, by February of 2011, Squinkies had made their way to the London Toy Fair. But in general, 2011 as a whole was a huge year for Squinkies. As you can probably imagine, the first Squinkies release of the year was a line I totally forgot about called Squinky Doos. Squinky Doos were your typical Squinkies characters with a twist. The twist being their fresh new hairstyles they were rocking, of course. These Squinkies usually came with like hair related accessories to be on theme, like brushes or a blow dryer, and there was even some salon play sets released. Toys like these can be a hit or miss considering how cursed the LPS with the controversial strand of hair are. Yeah, I'm looking at you, poodle number 17. I think TTPM toy reviews on YouTube really said it best when comparing the Squinky Doos to trolls. I know this should be a given, but maybe that's where this trend of like the random strand of hair on plastic toys came from. I never connected the two because they don't give off the same vibe at all. And the hair is like so natural on a troll doll, but so cursed on a Squinky Doo mermaid. But I can't lie, why is the box art kind of giving though? Like they look so cutesy, but they look cursed in real life? <laughs> Physically cursed when they're right in front of me and not just like drawn out, I guess. And this isn't an opinion I formed now, but like I have a core memory of cutting off the strand of hair on one of my squinky doos because I wanted it to be normal like the rest of my squinkies. Sending my deepest condolences to that squinky doo turtle. Enough about squinky doos though, moving on to more important things. In the footage of the London Toy Fair I was able to find, it's mentioned that Disney princess themed squinkies were coming soon. Considering the fact that squinkies had just launched and already had partnerships with companies like Disney for licensed characters, that is huge. Especially being that Blip is an independent toy company. And this would come into fruition. The Disney Princess Squinkies were originally meant to hit shelves on March 15th of 2011. However, according to a statement made on their Facebook page, it was originally just select Walmart locations and mid-April these Squinkies would be available more nationwide. I believe the Disney Princess line initially included just Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Belle, Jasmine, Ariel, and Snow White themed packs. Again, Again, with lack of a timeline, I couldn't find specifically what sets released first, though I'm sure this is something where it continued to expand as years went on because they were obviously very successful. I know Cinderella had to be pretty early on because I had the Cinderella set that had like the Cinderella characters, like the mice and stuff like that. I also couldn't find specific themed sets for every Disney princess, so I think some of them were just featured in play sets maybe because boy, there were a lot of them. There was a big carriage play set, a princess tiara, which you could attach your princess squinkies to? How cool is that? Big inkies, miniature castles, the royal stable, and hell, there was even a princess wand that doubled as a dispenser for your squinkies. Hello? Who cares that I'm 19 years old? That is so freaking cool, and I want it now. Disney princesses were only the beginning when it came to character-themed Squinkies releases, though. There were Cars-themed Squinkies, there were Toy Story-themed Squinkies, Barbie-themed Squinkies, Hello Kitty-themed Squinkies, Marvel and DC-themed Squinkies. Hell, even WWE had their own line of Squinkies. Everybody was getting in on the Squinkies. 
Squinkies hype. Which, let me just address the kind of elephant in the room. Despite Squinkies just being a bunch of, like, colorful animals, they were located in the girls' toy aisle and considered girls' toys. Although, personally, and I have the same opinion with, like, Littlest Pet Shop, I would consider them gender neutral because they clearly had that appeal. Blip realized this when seeing the success of Squinkies and as a part of their expansion for spring of 2011, they made boys a priority placing Squinkies in the boys aisle too, under the name Squinkies Boys. We knew boys were secretly going into the girls aisle to buy Squinkies. Moms were also asking why they couldn't get them for boys. And to make them more appealing to boys, Blimps imposed a competitive play pattern on the product. Male targeted Squinkies will come with two dye that encourage boys to compete for each other's collections. So unlike the typical colorful animals we'd see, Squinkies boys included things like monsters, aliens, skateboarders, ninjas, etc. Along with characters from Marvel, DC, WWE, like I said, but also Power Rangers, Hot Wheels, Spongebob, and I guess Cars Squinkies were considered a boys line, which explains how somehow I never had these or knew they existed, despite the fact that I was so, so, so obsessed with Cars. Although they had a Pixar pack in the girls line too, which included Up, Finding Nemo, A Bug's Life, and more, but I guess Cars just seemed to be the most masculine out of those movies because it's Cars. Anyway, Squinkies Boys is a great segue into Zinkies. Now we saw with the Squinky Doos what a gimmick looks like for these toys, of course, but you know what they did for Squinkies Boys? <sighs> Zinkies. I don't know if you've been told, Swinky Zinkies, so many to hold. 36 in every pack, roll them out for a battle attack. Hate to admit it, but unfortunately that jingle does go hard. I refuse to lie. But no, Swinkies weren't exclusive to the boys line. I just thought the attempt to, like, boyify it was interesting because the result is just being painfully dull compared to the regular or girls Zinkies. I mean, arguably both of these could be your army. Why else did they decide to give Zinkies their own plane. Zinkies, though, were miniature versions of Squinkies, which were already small toys as is. A good size comparison or example is they could fit perfectly on the top of your finger as shown in an ad for the toys. Zinkies, I think, exclusively only came with play sets because they're meant to store them inside due to their size. And can I just say, they are absolutely adorable. Some of my favorites are the coral, the cake, miniature house, and even a little train set. The one I'm the most nostalgic for by far though is the flower playset. There's a flower tower of sorts which is really cute as well but I specifically had the sunflower one growing up and you could put your zinkies inside the little petals. My only complaint about zinkies is the kind of lack of design. It reminds me of those cheap solid color LPS blind bags with a singular graphic. The difference here though is that because of their size, Zinkies get a pass. Like it's not like they could really do much, you know? You're sort of limited when toys get that small. Despite saying that, I think Zinkies were really built to last. Like because out of my childhood Squinkies that I've been able to find, they're usually rubbery and stiff while a singular Zinky I found on my carpet one day and have no idea where it came from is good as new. Another way that the Squinkies universe would kind of expand after their fast rise to fame was through gaming. As early as January 5th of 2011, according to their Facebook, Squinkies was in the works of creating a DS game. Blip Toys, the maker of the Squinkies line of collectible figures, has granted Activision Publishing Inc. the exclusive worldwide rights to develop and manufacture and distribute video games based on the Squinkies brand and its characters. The agreement covers the entertainment software products across multiple platforms, such as handheld, console, and connected platforms, as well as PC and mobile devices. The new Squinkies games are expected to debut throughout 2011, with the first Nintendo DS title for girls releasing in the April. With the first Nintendo DS title for girls releasing in April. The first Squinkies game was titled Squinky Surprise Inside and released on April 19th of 2011. And this game is full of mini games similar to something like the Moshi Monsters DS game Moshling Zoo. Just like that game, or I can't remember if it's that one or the carnival one, there is the collectible aspect, like similar to how you'd collect Moshlings in the game, or in this case, Squinkies in real life. With over 250 Squinkies to find and collect, the game is packed with hours of engaging gameplay. Magic coins can also be earned as bonuses to collect more Squinkies. Just like in the toy play sets, players can insert the magic coins into an interactive gumball playhouse to add new Squinkies to their collection. All Squinkies will be cataloged 
found in their interactive bubble bank, complete with animations, music, and sound effects. Then later that same year, the sequel titled Squinkies 2 Adventure Mall Surprise would be announced on their Facebook page with the game set to release just two months later on October 25th. Just like LPS or Zuzu Pets, exclusive Squinkies would be paired with these games. For Squinkies 1 Surprise Inside, I think the assortment was just kind of randomized and not as exclusive, but for the sequel Squinkies 2 Adventure Mall Surprise, the Squinkies Facebook page would tease the exclusive Pomeranian puppy, Shop to You Drop Girl, and their Squinkies van. For some reason, I could have sworn that there was like a Squinkies Boy DS game, but I searched and searched and I could not find anything anywhere or any type of proof that it actually existed. Even the Squinkies Facebook page leads to no results, which is really confusing because the way it's worded in the initial article that like announced the games and like showed more details, the wording makes it sound like a boy variant would be released in the future. And with Squinkies making Squinkies boys a priority, I think this would make sense too. If for some reason I'm wrong and maybe Squinkies isn't in the title of the game and that's why I couldn't find it, please let me know because that's the only plausible explanation I can think of as to why it would like, but even then, why would they do that? I don't, I don't know. Before we wrap things up for the OG era of Squinkies, there are two lines that I've yet to mention. The first one, which we have an established timeline for, is Squinkies Families. On January 2nd of 2013, Squinkies would announce their upcoming new Squinkies series titled Squinkies Families. I could find very little about this online, but the premise was all about Squinkies in a pack that would be a family. For example, in this announcement, a family of dogs is shown with several puppies and then two older dogs, which are the parents obviously, plus related dog accessories. Another set I found online was this cat slumber party set. As we can see, this set also has several kittens and then two to cats, which are obviously the parents, along with cat-related accessories. So unlike the usual squinky sets that came with an assortment of characters and or animals, you could get a set of whatever animal of your choice, basically. Lastly, the second line I wanted to mention is Squinkies Cubes. From my understanding, Squinkies Cubes were really similar to Big Inkies. Big Inkies were like giant squinkies, and these obviously weren't as giant, so they're definitely on a smaller scale. Living up to their name, many were like cube-like or square-like, but there were also some that were more like a circle or like a sphere. I could not for the life of me find when these were released. I only started to see posts about them on the Squinkies Facebook in 2013, so that's when I'm suspecting. And if that's the case, they are technically the last Squinky line of the OG Squinkies to be released. Now, here's where the timeline becomes unclear. After this last post about an aerial Disney princess Squinky cube, the posts jump from September 2013 to December of 2015. My theory is that there was some kind of like hiatus that slowed down the new Squinky releases, but Squinkies never like outright left stores completely, you know? Why I think this is is because in 2016, Squinkies would officially rebrand for their next era. Known as Squinkies Dewdrops, Squinkies would create a YouTube channel on March 11th of 2016 for this era specifically, and upload their first teaser the following month on April 22nd of 2016. This teaser would not be a commercial for the toys, but it would be something we hadn't got from Squinkies previously. Squinky Sodes, aka Webisodes. The description's summary of the series reads as follows. Meet Squinkies Dewdrops, Squinkies Pals, Harry Husky, Sheila Shears, all of eight, Trudy Stripes, and Carlos Tweets are ready to begin some squinkerific adventures. Stay tuned to see the first Squinky Sode coming soon. Something interesting I noticed was the initial box art used to tease the new line coming soon stayed more true to the original Squinkies box art, but a little more polished if anything. However, the Squinkies characters for this web series and in the promotional art going forward for these toys had more of a cartoony look. I don't even know if I'm like describing it right. See, the main thing that changed with the Dewdrops line was really just the eyes being more detailed with a cartoony pupil and a line drawn on, if that makes sense. They also had a lot more like detailed molds this time around to the point that like these don't really resemble Squinkies. Now, I don't think this is a bad thing necessarily. I don't want people to take me pointing this out like the wrong way. I'm not trying to be like, oh, the original Squinkies, they're so much better. I actually think it's a great upgrade because although I love the original Squinkies, 
Squinkies, they were pretty simplistic toys, so they could be, you know, cheaply distributed. I think with the Squinkies dewdrops, it's mostly the eyes throwing things off for me. It's like they've lost the, like, Squinky look somehow. But let me know your opinion in the comments. If you collected Squinkies during this rebrand especially, this was my first time hearing of this rebrand, so there's no, you know, nostalgia factor for me with this specific era of Squinkies. The Squinkies webisodes or Squinkisodes would have six overall introducing us to the characters of Sheila, Olive, Carlos, Harry, and Trudy, with the first episode being uploaded on May 5th of 2016 and the last episode being uploaded on August 4th. What I really appreciate about this like series of shorts is that it's a connected story. Other toys I've covered in the past, like I'm gonna just say Bratzilla's for example, don't do this. Like, they briefly did it in the beginning for the first three episodes, which really should have just been one big episode, not split up into parts like that, but the rest and majority of the webisodes are just random shorts, which does not help you get attached to the lore of those dolls or characters at all or any sort of storyline. However, from episode one, we are given a problem at hand, which is Harry the Husky's hat blowing away in the wind. So the crew decides to take a plane to the volcano where the hat got stuck on a tree, which speaking of, this is not me accusing anyone of copying each other, but why does Squeakyville look so eerily similar to Monstro City. I was seeing the resemblance so much that I was like, I want to put them side by side. And oh my God, my jaw literally dropped. Let me know if you see it too. But the actual world and or environment we see in the show actually looks nothing like Monstro City. It's just really the map. Anyway, we follow our main characters throughout their quest to retrieve Harry's hat because it actually keeps getting blown away to different locations throughout Squinkyville from the snowy mountains to the jungle. For what it is, as a simple adventure. I think this series is really cute and I enjoyed it. If I had seen these at the time that I was obsessed with Squinkies, I feel like it's something that I could see myself getting attached to. The Squinkies Dewdrops line would have three seasons in total, with their last upload on their YouTube channel in June of 2017 actually being a commercial for the season three release. As for the Squinkies Facebook page, they would continue being active until November 1st of 2017. And for all we knew, Squinkies was coming to an end, finally becoming a relic of the past. You thought it was over. <laughs> that was until the beginning of 2023. On March 22nd of 2023, Blip Toys would post a message, We're back, spelled out with Squinkies on their official Instagram, with the caption, Details soon. In the following days of this post, Squinkies would be available to purchase on Amazon, slowly starting to make their way back into stores in 2023. I know this all seems really sudden, and I didn't even know about this until, like, I would say maybe the beginning of this year when I finally, like, saw them in the toy aisle or people being, you know, really excited about them online. But in an interview with People of Play, Blip Toys owners Bill and Peter are asked what inspired them to bring back the original Squinkies, and here's what they had to say. The resurgence of micro toys and popularity of nostalgic toys have been two hot topics in the industry thanks to collectors and social media. Blip Toys owners Bill and Peter thought there was no time like the present to bring back the original unboxing and first micro collectible toy back. We recognized that consumers were collecting small, everyday branded items and then opening them on TikTok. What the creative team at Blip didn't see though, were the collecting of small whimsical characters. We knew the time was right to bring Squinkies back. Today's kids still love the gumball machine concept, the surprise element of seeing which character rolls out of the machine, and the ever popular bake shop theme. So we just had to bring the original back. We loved our Squinkies journey and were super pumped not only for a new generation of kids to enjoy them, but also for Gen Z collectors who played with them as kids not so long ago. I've noticed this myself because it is my generation after all, but it definitely applies to me as well that adult collectors are crucial now more than ever to the toy market. To quote from a CNN article titled Adults are flocking to the toy aisle even more than preschoolers, consumers 18 years of age and up have spent 1.5 billion in toy related purchases in the last period from January through April, overtaking the three to five year old demographic as the most important age group for the toy industry, according to to a new report from Market Research. If you ask me, I think this has a lot to do with not only the nostalgia factor for people my age, demographic, and you know, older, but social media making children feel the need to grow up faster. 
I mean, the current trend with kids is skincare for some reason, when kids generally don't need a whole skincare routine and it can actually do more harm to their skin than good depending on the products being used. Trends like this and Stanley Cups don't surprise me in the slightest when we've just witnessed the downfall of stores like Justice in recent years, which we're now seeing sold at Walmart. Squinky specifically, like they stated in the article, fit great with present day's toy market not only for children but adult collectors. A lot of people as of recently have a thing for trinkets and squinkies fit very well into that category. There's also like stating the obvious, um, the pandemic probably played a role in this because a lot of people feel thrown off from that chunk of time that was kind of like put on pause. I was a freshman in high school and I returned to school as a junior and that completely threw me off. And to this day, I like feel mentally 15, 16. It is unreal that I'll be 20 next year. So a lot of people to cope with this and just to, you know, have some enjoyment turn to nostalgia. And I know that's why a lot of people actually like my videos. But yeah, that is the history of squinkies. Now, obviously, this video is not complete or near over. To end this video off, you know I had to get a hold of some of those 2024, 2023 squinkies myself. It's not every day that these toys are actually accessible and like back in stores when I'm researching them. But with how the toy market is clearly changing, ever changing, it may just be the future. Anyway, roll the vlog footage. I know this angle is terrible. Also, if you can see my calic, no, you cannot. But I was getting milk for my mom, and I realized I'm right by Target, and this video, this a little bit in advance. I haven't even finished the script for the Squinkies video as I'm sitting down to film this, but I'm like, okay, I'm right here. I want to go see if they have Squinkies, and obviously, I'm going to take you guys with me. Did I really need a shot of me in the car? No, but the fact that I have my license, I am going to brag about it, because it took me way too long okay well i'm only 19 but you know what it's really is really extra challenging as an autistic person so i guess i'm gonna show me driving anyways i was parked let's drive to target now i'm not trying to get in an accident i know damn well the camera's gonna fall over it is not stable <laughs> called it. I got about five seconds of me driving, so that's about good enough, you know? Target! Here we come. I might have to get another Trolls blind bag. Who's gonna stop me from getting a little treat for myself? No one. Oh, my phone is so hot. Pro tip, if it is 84 degrees outside, do not set your phone on the car windshield to film, because immediately after I pick it up, I got a temperature warning because my phone was overheating. But it's fine. We're gonna go into Target now. I had to put my phone in front of the, like, air conditioning for, like, a solid five minutes for it to cool down. I don't know what aisle they're in. Can you tell I'm really bad at vlogging in public? Okay, let's see. I don't know what aisle they would be in. Definitely not this one. This reminded me I've been meaning to do video about baby alive they kind of freak me out but i also used to be obsessed with killing people see there's supposed to be a display like this at the end but i haven't seen any for squinkies this is disney princess who could have known right next to the lps and oh my god i thought these were like banned or something zoom zoom Oh my god, I'm so excited right now. I don't know which ones I'm gonna get. I don't know what the difference is. This one's a horse wearing a cowboy hat, so I feel like it needs to come home with me. We're back. Because it was too hot to do an unboxing in the car, I just ended up saving them until I filmed this video. I don't know if you guys caught the Easter egg in the back the whole time, but this box has been haunting me for the past week, but it was worth the wait for you guys. I'll do it for you guys. As always, before we open them, let's do an in-depth look. 
in-depth look. Oh my god. Here is an up close of the squinkies because I don't know if I really really gave a good close up in that vlog, obviously. On the back here, it shows wave one and it also has a QR code to learn more online. I don't know what that means. We'll have to see. It also has a note about if they're left on pencils or other objects, squinkies may warp or tear. I did talk about the quality and how over the years they didn't age the best. So it's cool. I don't know if they originally had this on their packaging. Maybe they did and I'm just, I was a kid. Anyway, I'm most excited because there's these pink ones and they're a mystery and I love blind boxes. They're so fun. I love the suspense. So let's unbox and do a review. Oh my gosh. I haven't done this in years. I'm so excited. Okay, let's start with the ones that we can actually visibly see and I'll do close-ups for all of them. Here we go. Oh my god, they're so cute. First we have this little... Hello? First we have this little cat and it's sitting on like a little cushion. I didn't realize how many cats. There's another one. I remember these. Is this supposed to have more than one eyebrow? <laughs> Next we have this cat that I can't tell if it's supposed to have another eyebrow or if that's just like a little like defect. She could be missing an eyebrow. If there's not supposed to be an eyebrow then that's definitely a defect. Oh my gosh. Next we have this little dog. We have this little either a schnitzu, shitsu, or schnauzer. I butchered that definitely. And all of those are blue except for this one. I don't know if that was actually an accident because the other row is entirely green. And then I don't know what these pink ones are at all. Maybe they're all pink. Maybe that was, I don't know. Oh, this is the reason I picked this one. This is a little pony and it's wearing a hat. I have to say it, it reminds me of Chapel Roan. And I'm really sad because on the back, they do not have a pink one. They only have blue, purple. Although they do have a purple pony with a like little braid and the mane is pink. They need to make a pink pony for Pink Pony Club, okay? Because this is totally giving Chapel Roan to me. I didn't say it in the vlog because like I'm horrible at vlogging in public, but it was reminding me of that. That's why I bought it. This, oh my gosh, so cute. Is this, is this broken? Uh... Here is this little pig. I don't know if this is broken. I'm just realizing that. Oh. Unless the ear's supposed to be like that, I'm just stupid. It's still really cute, nevertheless. Oh, I love the sound of un unboxing these. Then we have a little elephant. And then lastly, oh my god, I this is my favorite so far. Well, this, the pony is my favorite, but this one's my second favorite. We have a frog. It has a little bow tie. Oh my god, this one is so freaking cute. This, I think like quality-wise, actually, no, there was nothing wrong with this one. Quality-wise, this is like the best quality one out of the set that I've unboxed so far. Now we have my mystery balls. I'm never saying that again. It's, guys, it's not wrong. They come in little balls, okay? Oh my god, let me do ASMR. Oh my god, I love the sound. It's like a- I was gonna say Pokeball, but that probably that's probably not right. <laughs> I say that with literally no knowledge about Pokemon, but anyway, um, we're getting off topic. Let me do a close-up for this first one. Oh, <gasps> what's this? <gasps> oh my gosh, it's a seal. Oh my god, maybe they're all purple. That would be cute. But they might just be different colors. I'm not really sure. Oh, I should have done this for all of them. Oh! <gasps> this is a giraffe, I believe. Yeah, this is a giraffe. I think I remember this, uh... I think I remember this from when I was little, this mold. Yeah, it's a giraffe. Aww. I'm not gonna do a close-up for this one. <gasps> oh my god, stop. We have a freaking seahorse. Are you kidding? This is so cute. I might have to go get more of these, like... <laughs> <laughs> Squinkies, you know, hit me up. I will unbox for free. <gasps> oh my gosh. Uh, this one's like, I think it's supposed to also be purple, but it's more like a white. Or I think that the first two were more purple. These, oh, these two are white. Okay. It was just my lighting that was making it look purple. The first two, the seal and the giraffe, they're purple. The second two, white. So we got a mix of colors. Here is the little zebra. Zebra. <laughs> and let me do a close up of all of them. Oh my gosh. Focus, please. Here is a little view of all, oh my god, I thought I was gonna, I don't wanna drop them because they're gonna get hair on them. I love closing these. Oh, it's so satisfying. Oh, it's so satisfying. Oh, that one didn't do it. Yes, yes, it's so satisfying. You, you can't lie, you can't lie. Well, that was my review. Oh, we did the QR code. I'm not sure what this QR code is, so I'm kind of curious. Okay. Ooh, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> Welcome, Squeaky's Originals are back. Tiny and Squeaky's live in the land of Squeakyville, where there are always fun adventures to be had. We're back. Oh, this is just their website. Okay. Okay, so promo. Well, in their defense, they said, scan QR code to learn more online. I thought it was going to be something more interactive. 
Anyway, that was my official review of Squeakies 2024-2023. It's seriously so cool they brought this back and I'm really glad that they, you know, were really thinking of their audience and knew that people would enjoy this. Go treat yourself to some Squinkies now and thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all things Squinkies in the comments. And have you guys got the new Squinkies or seen them in stores yet? Thank you once again to my patrons. I love you guys so, 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 so much. And my first video of July is hopefully going to be on Disney XD. I haven't done a channel history video for a while. I know I've been really, you know, preoccupied with, you know, video essays on toys, but we're gonna get back into that, I promise. Or Disney XD slash JetX, should I say, because they're like one of the same. I'll also be doing a VidCon vlog on my second channel, which will be very fun. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next video. What's squishy, squishy, squashy, squinkies! Squinky, squinky, squinky! Squishy, squishy, squashy fun. A tiny surprise in everyone.